Okay, Science 30, so uh, this is going to be a brief video on the functions of each of the individual white blood cells in the immune response and their function in the immune response. We're going to start with a macrophage. This is in no particular order. We'll go through their order and the steps of the immune response in a second. Um, a macrophage is a type of white blood cell that's going to find and identify a pathogen and basically give it a giant bear hug until it uh, swallows it inside of itself. So macrophages engulf pathogens by a process called phagocytosis and it's just a big bear hug. They chase the microbe until they get it. Once they catch it, they squeeze around it and their membrane traps it inside. And then in there, the macrophage has enzymes that'll break down the pathogen and break down any foreign material. And then it might choose to express portions like the antigens of those uh, pathogens onto its cell surface so that it can help other immune response cells uh, identify the pathogen and attack them in other ways. Helper T cells coordinate the immune response and tell B cells to make antibodies. So helper T cells are, there's lots of different types of T cells. T cells are types of white blood cells. Helper T cells, they help, they coordinate. They're calling the shots from the background. They're coordinating the immune response by releasing certain factors and they're telling B cells um, which is another type of cell, to make antibodies. So there's always a specific antibody for a specific antigen on a pathogen. So antibodies will bind to and trap antigens or molecules or pathogens which have those antigens on them. Killer T cells, or in other words, cytotoxic T cells, kill viruses and cancer cells by poking a hole in them. So these killer T cells basically go stabby stabby and they stab the pathogen cell until the pathogen cell ruptures and dies. B cells are responsible for producing antibodies. So when you hear the word B cells, think antibodies, B for bodies, antibodies. Um, memory cells are going to keep a record of previously encountered antigens on pathogens so that there's a quicker immune response the next time the body might come into contact with that pathogen. And suppressor T cells are going to stop the immune response. And this is to maintain homeostasis, or in other words, we don't want the immune response to constantly happen. We have to stop it at some point so that it doesn't keep going. Okay, so I want to show you now, very briefly, um, the seven steps to the immune response. This is something I did in my classroom uh, a year or two ago. And because I can't do it on a whiteboard with you guys, I have a photo of it, thankfully. And so the seven steps to the immune response, and I'll kind of walk you through it here. So step number one, the pathogen enters the body. So there's the pathogen, looks all mean, and he's got these little red triangles around his surface, and those are antigens. Step two, the macrophage, which is a type of white blood cell that we just discussed, is going to engulf, or through that phagocytosis process, that big bear hug, it's going to engulf the pathogen, and it's going to copy the, take the antigens off of the pathogen, right, those little red triangles that were on the pathogen. The macrophage has swallowed up the pathogen and it's taken those red triangles, those antigens, and expressed it on its own surface. That might seem strange. You might wonder, well, why is the white blood cell, the macrophage, all of a sudden putting the face, if you will, the antigens, the face of the pathogen on its surface? Well, that's so that other cells in the immune response, like helper T cells, can... Uh, identify the antigens of the certain pathogen that has been found in the body by the macrophage and it can make copies of it. So helper T cells make a copy of the antigen. So there's my helper T cell, this black looking blob here, and it's interacting with the antigen and it's going to copy the uh, antigen that the macrophage has found from the pathogen and it's going to make more antigens. Now you might wonder, why is the helper T cell making more antigen? The antigen is the face of the pathogen. Why would I want to make more? Well, by making more antigens, the helper T cell makes it easier for other immune response cells to find and locate the other cells of the pathogen that have that same antigen. Basically, the T cell and the macrophage are working together to post wanted posters. So by putting the antigen all around the body and making lots of copies of it, um, we've basically put up a bunch of wanted posters with the face of the pathogen or the antigen right on it. 
And now B cells can interact with those antigens that we've copied and make antibodies. And remember, antibodies, the step number four here, antibodies are specific for every antigen. And so these B cells are making antibodies, these Y-shaped structures, which are only going to fit these triangle-shaped antigens. Step number five, those antibodies that we just made in step four by B cells are going to swim throughout the bloodstream and find other pathogen cells. And when the antibody finds the pathogen, it's going to bind to the matching antigen that it was designed for, and it's going to immobilize or stop the pathogen from moving. It holds it still. When the antibody holds the pathogen still, one of two things can happen. Step number six, um, either a macrophage will come and engulf the remaining pathogens, and then that basically looks just like step two, and then step, and then step three will happen, four will happen, five will happen all over again, and the body is just going to tackle the response that way by taking a macrophage, swallowing up the immobilized pathogen, taking its antigens and expressing it on its surface so that other T helper T cells can interact with those antigens and make copies of them so that more B cells can make more antibodies. But uh, that's not the only thing that can happen. The other thing that can happen is that killer T cells will puncture a hole in the cell membrane of the pathogen and just kill it. So macrophages are definitely killing the pathogen when they go gobble them up and take their proteins and express their antigens on the outside. But killer T cells don't even bother with that. They don't bother engulfing anything like a macrophage does. Killer T cells just take out a little, a little knife basically and they go stabby stabby and they rupture the cell membrane of the pathogen and they burst it, essentially killing the pathogen. So lots of killer T cells are doing their job. So between macrophages engulfing the pathogen, killer T cells puncturing and killing the pathogen, you're going to have eventually uh, the, an end to the immune response. Like all the pathogens will have died. And so when that happens, two things must happen. Suppressor T cells have to stop the immune response. We have to have a different type of T cell called a suppressor T cell suppress the immune response. It stops the immune response from happening. This stops your body from fighting pathogens. This is important. If the suppressor T cells don't work, then you don't stop the immune response, then you will have what's called an autoimmune disorder where your body starts attacking its own cells because it's got nothing better to do um, and that's not good. Memory B cells uh, are going to remember the antigen, those red triangles, so that the next time the body comes into contact with those antigens, we will have a much faster, much stronger immune response. So we don't have to wait for macrophages to express the antigens on the surface and then T cells to copy the antigens and then help, help her T, help her, uh, sorry, then B cells to make antibodies because we're already going to have memory B cells which already have antibodies produced and they're able to produce them faster the next time around because they've already done it once before. Now that could have been 20 years ago that you've come into contact with that antigen last and now 20 years later you've come into contact with it again. Memory B cells hold on to that memory for long periods of time throughout your lifetime which is awesome and this is what vaccines are. Vaccines, by getting vaccinated early in life or at any point in your life, your body is exposed to a uh, attenuated or um, harmless version of a pathogen. Your body is going to interact with that harmless version of the pathogen uh, as if it were real. It'll make antibodies for the antigens and then it'll fight the immune response, which is why you sometimes get flu-like symptoms after you have a vaccine, which makes sense. And then you get over that fake uh, flu. And then once you have made memory B cells for those antigens, your body is able to remember those antigens. And the next time it comes into contact with that um, particular uh, pathogen, it'll have a faster response. So I'll zoom out here for a second. I posted this on our Google Classroom, but go ahead and take a screenshot of this if you'd like. Um, these are my seven steps to the immune response um, for Science 30 in the Alberta curriculum. Thanks, guys.